have been in a fall protection class before? How many of you guys have been in a confident person class before? How many of you guys remember every single thing you were taught? Oh, I got two hands, three hands. Come on. Outstanding. We really try to talk about how to do it the right way, how to prevent accidents, and they keep happening. We just got the numbers back from 2014. Once they did all the calculations of how many days you guys work, vacations, weekends, it just came in at 3.5 people die every single day in the United States due to falls. 70% of all those falls are from 10 feet or less. How many guys work above 10 feet? We can pretty much all at some point raise our hands and say we've done that. We have to be tied off even when we're on a ladder and we're hired six feet on this job. Is that correct? correct. Who thinks that's just a little? That's not an OSHA rule, by the way. Who thinks that's just a little bit overkill? I told you, Dave, get their names. Him? Him? Over there? He is. A lot of you guys are subcontractors working for DPR. They're trying to eliminate accidents. We're trying to do the education. Matter of fact, that's the one thing that they found out in all the statistics for 2014 was all other accidents are actually trending down except fall protection stays level. All these years it just stays level. They say the only thing that actually made a difference was training. And we try to do training over and over and over. And they say that basically whatever I teach you, you're going to remember about 20% of it, which is why I let in how many of you guys remember what we're talking about as far as inspecting of our gear. Right? OSHA rules were written in what? blood. Your guy's blood, by the way. Or co-workers, people that have died. So that we can learn to make sure that when we get on this project, that we don't know somebody who died. The vantage point job that was down downtown, right before you get on the 163, it was a thing at 35, 38 story residential high rise. Anybody work on that job? You remember the death that they had on that job? Got a couple guys. I'll tell you the story. Had an iron worker call me and say, hey, we want to get some body belts. You guys remember the days of the body belt? No harness, just a little belt. Some of the old guys like me are like, oh yeah, it's a nice harness. What decade was that fall protection? A belt, just a belt with a little D-ring in the back. 1997, technically that was still fall protection. So for you guys that have been working in, uh, in construction for that long, that wasn't that long ago, at least it wasn't to me. I've been doing this 30 years. So I had an iron worker call me and go, hey, Joey, we want to get those belts. We want them just a little bit wider. Can you make them for us? And I said, you know, I, why? Why don't you put a harness on? Well, my guys aren't going to go above six feet. I go, well, those walls are going to be 10 feet. I know you're going to be above six feet. I don't want to make them. By the way, I'm a salesman. That's how I make my living. Are they technically legal? Yes, they are, as long as you don't go above six feet. And he was going to put a little positioning uh chain rebar assembly on it, lean back off of that wall. So I told him no, he went somewhere else and bought them, which they can sell, they're legal. Fast forward about two and a half years, they're on a 35th floor. Hispanic worker, 21 years old, sitting up on top of the wall and he's up, he's only up three feet. There was a railing that was beside him that was wood that was tied into the rebar. He put it down so that he could get onto the outside of the wall. Now he's facing, so here's the wall, and they're pulling pieces and he's kind of helping, you know, charge the wall. Takes a chain rebar assembly, moves over, goes to hook it off. And as he went to hook it off, he missed the hook. And he fell. He fell from the 35th floor to a 10th floor deck. It's a long way to go. So the waterproofer who uh, used to be on that deck, Ron Miller, Peter Ross, he said, as the kid fell, the whole way, he went like this to make sure that he was going to land on his feet. So what's going through your head as you're falling, what is that, I don't know, 25 floors, 250 feet? He's concerned that he's going to land on his feet. And then he did land on his feet. Unfortunately, what happened was Ron had to send two of his employees to get counseling after that, which, by the way, both employees never returned back to work. And the reason for that was not for what it looked like after the kid fell, because when he landed, his legs stuck into the concrete for two inches. 
Yes, bone will go into concrete. And I only know that because they asked Ron if he would grind out the bone out of the concrete. So I'm not making it up. He told me he wouldn't do it. So the guys that didn't make it back. So the kid lands. He goes forward. And I've seen the picture because OSHA, I saw it through OSHA because I helped teach the OSHA officers. And they wanted to know what were the things they did right and what things they did wrong. So the body is flat, his spine is out of his body, and he's face down, and you can imagine what happens when you hit concrete going that fast. But that's not what the view from the employees who never returned, what they saw, the view which they never got over, because they told this to Ron, was that the kid's father and his uncle were working across the street on another job. And the sight of seeing that dad running across the deck and seeing his son in an area, not even in a spot, was too much to get over. How many of you guys have kids? Could you imagine if that's the last thing you saw was your child in an area? I have a son who's 21. I have a son that's an 11. I have a son that just got back from Afghanistan. And I think, and thank God he came back okay. But I keep thinking of, what if he wouldn't have come home? And I think about that dad. Because the dad collapsed over the body. You guys, we are here to try to make sure that that doesn't happen. I'm a salesman. Really, at the end of the day, I'm a salesman. But I teach fall protection because I think there's a value in it that some way, somehow, I've got to connect for you guys. How can I apply what I'm learning today so that it doesn't happen on this job? And you guys know what I'm talking about. Wow, that was a really good talk by Joey, right? You're talking to your buddy, and then all of a sudden we get up on this roof, and there's something sitting right near the edge, and you look around, you go, ah, oh, it's going to take me 10 seconds to grab that thing and come back. And as you're walking over, you stumble on something, or you catch tie wire or something on the ground you didn't see, and then you stumble over the side. So what was the difference? Oh, Joey was talking about putting his harness on, we're planning it out. It's that one little minute or that one little second that we think no one's going to see me. Last part of this is, how many of you guys remember the job in uh, Vegas, the city center project back in the day, 2007 I think is when it ended. They had 16 deaths on that job. 16 people fell to their death. So bad that a safety officer actually fell to his death. Guy was an old guy, of course, he's going to retire in six months. His actual nickname was Eileen. Why? Because he was one of these old guys, and he'd always walk up to talk to you and go, Hey, Francisco, how you been, man? And he'd go lean down, right? Take a break. And he leaned on a cable that somebody had pushed back into the concrete with a drop that had come out, and when he leaned on it, he fell into an elevator shaft 22 floors and died. And there's a lot of people that rely upon you your income, your wife, your children, for you come home every single day. So much so that I drove over here just to give you guys 10 minutes to try to say let's refocus on fall protection. Some of you guys work for DPR Construction. We go, wow, they're a little bit, you know, a little bit too safe. There is no too safe. They cared enough about you to try to educate you to make sure that you get home every day because they don't want to be the general contractor that ended up in a result where you didn't show up. Look out for your coworkers, right? If you see something wrong with his harness, or it's too loose, and you don't say anything, you might as well introduce yourself to that guy and say, I don't care enough about you to tell you that there might be a problem in case there's an accident, because that's really what you're saying. I don't care enough about you. And it should be just the opposite way. Everybody put your hand up. Everybody, I care about the guy next to me. We're gonna make sure that we don't have any accidents or falls on this job. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Joey, thank you. All right, everybody take one minute and just think about your families. Don't talk to each other. Don't do anything else. Just take one minute and think about your families before you leave.
Alrighty guys, thank you. You need to remind yourselves of this whenever you see it.